Here we're looking at the game that we're going to create called Tiny Game. So we control the green character and wherever we press on the screen we're going to move to. And we've got these two um, red faces, uh, the angry faces, who the aim is to avoid. And if we collide with one of them then we'll disappear. So we can restart and start again. So, so we're going to be looking at how to how to get the green smiley face to respond to um, wherever we press on the screen. Uh, we're going to look at collisions, um, collisions between the, the green smiley face and the red angry faces and also how to get this random movement of the, um, the angry faces around the place. Okay so let's get started. Um, in the project folder there's just three graphics so there's background.jpg, which is that um, paper sort of background. And then we've got angry.png and happy.png, which is the angry face and the happy face. So uh, we've also got this main.lua file and build.settings file. They're what we're going to be creating. So I'm actually going to remove them for now because we're going to be creating them from scratch. So we'll remove that one and remove that one. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, so in our project folder now, we've just got those three graphics. So I'm going to switch over to the text editor. And I'll just um, remove those so we can start from scratch. So the first thing you do when you create a Corona application is create a main.lua file. So I'm going to say file, save as, and then in the tiny game project folder, I'm going to create a file called main.lua. The first thing we're going to do is get that background, that paper background showing. Now, its name is just background.jpg. Okay, so let's load it up. So we're going to say local. Now, that's going to create a variable or a, a storage container. And that's just a container where we can store uh, anything we want in memory. I mean, it could be a sound uh, it could be a number, it could be some words. In this case, it's going to be an image. And we're going to give it a name called background. <coughs> now, you might see this, the word local has, uh, has gone a blue color. It's, a, it's a, what's called a keyword or part of the Lua language. So, and it just means create a storage space in memory. Background is what we're going to call the variable. Now, this you could call whatever you like. The rules are you can't have any spaces, so we couldn't say we couldn't say like background. Um, can't put any sort of funny characters in there, like um, you, know, you don't want to put like quotes in there or anything that that won't work. So just just single words and, and try and make it relevant to whatever is going to be stored in there. So in this case, uh, now the equals means we're going to assign. So here we've created the storage container. Equals means we want to place something into that storage container. <coughs> And in this case, it's going to be a display object, so display, and it's going to be an image, so new image, and then open, close, round brackets, and in double quotes, we're going to type that image name, which was background.jpg. Okay, so if we save this now, so I'm going to save it, and then we go over to the simulator and open up the project again, so I'm going to press Control r to refresh it. Now, we'll see what's happened is a couple of things. We do have the background image, but um, one of the first things you'll probably note is that the phone orientation has changed. So it was um, sitting horizontally, and now it's sitting vertically. So what we're going to do before we move on is get it back to sitting um, the horizontal plane, or landscape is the other, the other word for it. So to do that, we're going to go back here. Now... To do that, it's actually done outside of the main.lua file. And so I'm going to create another, just a plain text file, and go save as. I'm going to call this one build.settings. Notice it's so it's build.settings, all lowercase, and say save. And then in here, we're just going to set this up. Um, what's going to happen here is when your app loads, this file is going to be read. And it just provides some extra info for for the file, including here the orientation. So orientation equals. Now here, just be careful with um, with your brackets. The general principle with, and by the way, I'm using curly brackets here, not round brackets. You'll see 
both are used in various different um, parts. But this bracket here was started and it ends down there. So the, the general principle with brackets is uh, what opens must close. close um, and, or you could think of it as in uh, what begins must end. So that is ended there and then orientation equals there and that bracket ends there. And then inside here, it's going to create some space. By the way, you don't, all this white space here, you can like these brackets could sit you know, you don't. You could get rid of that space there. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm just sort of formatting that so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to say default, and this is the bit that's actually going to set the phone on its side when the app loads. Make it load sort of sideways, and it's going to say landscape capital R right. Okay, make sure it's a capital. It is case sensitive. Okay, so I'm going to save that, and now we'll go back to the simulator. That's the output screen. Go back to the simulator and run it again. And there we go. We've got. Um, let's get that on screen. We've got now. It's um, it's sitting there horizontally, and that's and that's fine. One thing I should point out right now is that here for this video, this game, tiny game, I'm setting it up for the iPhone 4 um, screen size and resolution. Now you might be thinking, well, that's great, but I want to make a game for iPhone 5 or I want to make it for Android. And one of the great things about Corona is that you can set it up and, and, and make um, the same game or the same lure code you write can be used for both iPhone or iPad or uh, or an Android as well. So um, the thing to note is they all have different screen resolution or different screen sizes. And creating apps to handle all those um, resolutions and screen sizes is possible. I've decided it's outside of the scope of the, the Tiny Game series here. But if it's something you're interested in, then have a look at, um, if you just, this is um, on the Corona uh, SDK blog. And if you just Google Corona SDK blog and then dynamic image resolution, this one here, made easy and, and have a read of this article. Likewise, uh, have a look at Content Scaling Made Easy and also the ultimate config.lua file. All of these will help you um, help show you how to set up an app to, to cater for different screen sizes. Again, I've decided it's outside of the scope of Tiny Game. The idea here is just to get uh, some graphics on screen and get them moving around and, and just look at the basics of programming. Okay, so... Um, with that in mind, I should just point out, so the background.jpg is set up, so it's 960 uh, wide, 640 high, which is the, the re resolution of an iPhone 4 screen. Okay, so um, back to Notepad. We've got our build.settings, which is making it sit um, landscape or on the horizontal. So back here, we've got our background loading, and that's good. So let's, um, let's c create another variable to get our um, smiley face on there. So... Uh, I'm going to create a variable called happy. Again, that's just a name I've, I've come up with. Now, it's also going to be a, a display object and a, a new image. Now, actually, you also might see there's new image and there's new image rect. For dynamic resolution, I believe using the rect one can, can help. But again, for tiny game, it's a bit outside the scope and a new image will work here. And you can read more about the different ways to load images um, the better you get uh, using Lua and Corona. So we're going to create, um, we're going to bring in a file here, which is called happy.png. Why is background.jpg, why is that a JPEG, and why is this a PNG file? The answer is, is that with a JPEG, you can't have, well, JPEG's better for images that are photos, and like that piece of paper was originally a photo. So it's going to work better as a JPEG. Happy.png, um, simple graphics are, are better off as a, a PNG. Furthermore, and the really important bit is that Happy has got a, it's transparent. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute when we, um, let's just bring it in and you'll be able to see. So happy.png up there. So let's um, go over to the simulator and control R to refresh. You'll see it's sitting up there. So in the top left hand corner. Now, the thing about this this image here is it's it's got a transparent background. You can just see, I know it's sitting up there. And actually while we're at it, let's let's remove this this bar up here. So um, just right up the top of the file, we're gonna say display dot set status 
bar. This has got nothing to do with our game. It's just, as you'll see, getting rid of that, that bar up the top there that's um, got that info we don't need. And we're going to say hidden status bar. Just remember, everything's case sensitive. So um, if it's got a capital, put it in a capital. Okay, we're going to save that. Run it again. And there we go. So it's, it's gotten rid of that bar. Okay, so back to our PNG file. You'll see that the um, the happy face, you can see the paper background underneath it. So it's got, other than the green lines, it's a, it's a transparent image. Now, the only file type, image file type, that'll let you do that is a PNG file. So if this was a JPEG, then this smiley face would have a, a white or whatever color background. Um, there's no way to make a JPEG transparent. So if you need transparency, use a PNG. If it's like this background here and it's come from a photo, you're better off with a JPEG. So you can you can find out more about the differences between JPEG and PNG, but hopefully that clarifies some of it. Okay, so let's move on. Let's get the, uh, the angry face in too. So rather than type everything out, I'm going to copy this line, paste it, and create, change the variable name to angry. And I'm going to load in angry.png. Okay, so let's try that. And it worked, but now the images are just sitting on top of each other, which isn't so good. So let's talk about um, how to move these things or position them on the screen. So let's just, um, I'm going to start by, let's just move happy face. Now, I'll just do this. I'll type it out and then explain it. So I'm going to say x equals 100 and happy dot y equals, let's say, 100 as well. Okay, so let's just see what happens and then we'll talk about it. All right, so the um, the smiley face has moved. Now, and what's actually happened is it's moved 100 pixels in from the left-hand side on the horizontal axis or the x-axis, and it's moved 100 down uh, on the y-axis or the vertical axis. If you've never worked with images on the computer, and this is not just phones, but on the computer in general, the way the coordinate system works is that 0, 0, or x equals 0 and y equals 0 is in the top left corner, and x, as you'd expect, is the horizontal axis, and y, as you'd also expect, is the, the vertical axis. One thing to note, which is, is different to the usual number plane, you probably learnt in mathematics, is that the y-axis is inverted. Now, don't get scared by that word. It just means that as you increase y values, and let, let's try it, as you increase, let's say, make uh, y equals, I don't know, 300. As you increase the y value of a display object, it'll move down, which usually in mathematics, like in the usual number plane, you increase the y value, it goes up on the vertical axis. So just know that the y-axis is, is flipped around, okay? Um, all right, so let's actually move the um, I'm gonna let's move the angry face coordinates to the bottom right hand corner. So x equals now again these values are sort of hard coded for an iPhone four. If you're gonna cater for several phones, several screen sizes, you probably end up using percentage widths. Um, saying well, that means like make its exposition eighty or ninety percent of the way across the um the horizontal plane or you know 80 90 percent down the towards the bottom of the screen so you use percentages rather than hard coding values but it's, it's a little bit more it, what's well, it's outside of the scope of tiny game here so let's just get this done so i'm going to say so the iphone 4 is 960 wide so i'm going to make it say i don't know 880 on the x-axis and then on the y-axis so that's 640 on the y-axis is the the height of the um iPhone 4 when it when it's sitting on its side uh, and let's make that say 600 so let's let's look at that and there we go so it's down there in fact it's a little bit too low so I'm gonna change that to say 560 and that'll bring it up a bit on the y-axis so there we go okay so that's good let's move this guy back to the top left corner so change that back to 100 okay so and we'll just try that Okay, so that's how to get some graphics on the screen. And in the next video, we're going to look at um, how to actually get them moving around, how to respond to things called events. And, um, and that will actually sort of get our game going. Okay, so we'll leave it there.